Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to create stamp in Premiere Pro. Also, I will show you how to add an impact animation effect to the stamp, as you can see on the screen. You can use the stamp to demonstrate discounts, quality, and privacy of your video or documents. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced video editor, this tutorial is designed to provide you with valuable insights and techniques to take your stamp creation to the next level. Let's get started. Alright, now we are inside Premiere Pro. As you can see on the timeline, I have got a gradient background for the tutorial purpose. Also, I have got a stamp sound effect. First of all, let's move over to the Essential Graphics panel to create a graphics layer. And then, click on this icon. Next, click on Text. As you can see on the timeline, a graphics layer has been created. Now, we have to remove the text from the graphics layer. After that, let's extend the graphics layer. In the next step, we have to create a perfect circle. That's why, move over to the Essential Graphics panel. And then, click on the Ellipse tool to create a circle. Now you can see on the program monitor, a circle has been created. But the circle is not perfect. Next, we have to turn off the fill color. Because, we need only the stroke of the circle. And then, we have to turn on the stroke color. After that, let's make the stroke value around 20. I am going to use white color for the stroke. You can use any color that you like. Now we need to round the circle perfectly. That's why, we have to open the ruler panel to make the circle round perfectly. Firstly, make sure the program monitor is selected. And then, move over to the view panel. After that, we have to click on show ruler. Now, you can see the ruler panel is open on the program monitor. In the next step, pull the ruler and we will take the perfect size for our circle. You can follow my program monitor to take your size. Now you can see, I took a size perfectly. This is a square size. In the next step, let's select the circle from the Essential Graphics panel. And then, the point on the left side of the circle should be pulled up to this position. Next, the point on the right side of the circle should be pulled up to this position. After that, the point on the up side of the circle should be pulled up to this position. And lastly, the point on the down side of the circle should be pulled up to this position. As you can see on the program monitor, our circle is perfect. To center align the circle both vertically and horizontally, you can use the align tools. Alright, as you can see, this is the perfect size of the circle. Now we don't need the rulers. So, let's remove the rulers. Again, move over to the view panel. And then, click on this show ruler option to disable the rulers panel. In the next step, Let's move over to the Essential Graphics panel to rename the circle. Let's give the name Circle 1. And then, click on OK. Next, we have to duplicate the Circle 1. Right-click on the Circle 1. And then, click on Duplicate. Next, I am going to rename the top circle. Let's give the name Circle 2. After that, make sure the top circle layer is selected. And then, we have to make the scale size around 91. Next, for the circle 2, we need only fill color. That's why, let's turn off the stroke color. And then, turn on the fill color. Now I am going to use the white color for the circle 2. By the way, you can use any color that you like. Alright, as you can see on the timeline, we have created two different circle. In the next step, we have to create a rectangle. That's why, from the new layer icon, we have to click on rectangle. Now you can see, our rectangle has been created. For the rectangle, we need the stroke color. That's why, let's turn off the fill color of the rectangle. And then, turn on the stroke color. Let's change the stroke color. I am going to use the cerulean blue color for the stroke. You can use any color that you like. And then, click on OK. After that, let's extend the length of the rectangle. Always make sure the stroke value is 20. And then, we have to make the scale size of the rectangle around 156. After that, let's rename the rectangle layer. Now, we have to create a mask for the rectangle. 
First of all, let's move over to the Effect Controls panel. And then, open the Rectangle Control parameter. After that, we have to click on the Create Ellipse Mask Tool icon. As you can see on the program monitor, an ellipse mask has been created. Now, we need to resize the ellipse mask to match the circle too. In the next step, the point on the left side of the mask should be pulled up to this position. Next, the point on the top side of the mask should be pulled up to this position. After that, the point on the right side of the mask should be pulled up to this position. And lastly, the point on the downside of the mask should be pulled up to this position. Now you can see on the program monitor, our mask is perfectly resized. Alright, our stamp is almost complete. In the next step, we have to add a text to the stamp. Let's move over to the Essential Graphics panel. And then, click on Text. Now you can see on the program monitor, a text has been created. To center align the text both vertically and horizontally, you can use the Align tools. After that, let's change the fill color of the text. I am going to use the cerulean blue color for the text. You can use any color that you like. And then, click on OK. Next, I am going to change the font of the text. You can use any font that you like. And now, we have to type a text. From the program monitor, let's double-click on the text. And then, type your text. As I told you before, you can use the Align tools to center align the text both vertically and horizontally. Our stamp is almost complete. Next, let's move over to the Effects panel to add an effect. This is a Rough and Edges effect. Let's drag and drop this Rough and Edges effect to the graphics layer. Let's move over to the Effect Controls panel to customize the Rough and Edges effect. Firstly, from the Edge Type parameter, we have to select Rusty. Next, we have to make the border parameter value around 20. Now you can see the changes on the program monitor. After that, let's make the edge sharpness value around 7. Alright, now you can see on the program monitor, our stamp creation is complete. In this way, you can create a stamp in Premiere Pro. In the last step, we have to add impact animation to the stamp. Let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the stamp. Next, we have to click on the stopwatch icon of the scale to create the first keyframe. And then, let's make the scale value around 1111. After that, move the time indicator 5 frames forward. And here, we have to make the scale value around 50. Let's right-click on the second keyframe of the scale. And then, click on Bezier. Now, you can see the impact animation on the timeline. It looks great. In the next step, again let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the stamp. Now, we have to make the rotation parameter value around minus 24. And then, we have to click on the stopwatch icon of the opacity to create the first keyframe. And then, let's make the opacity value 0. After that, move the time indicator 2 frames forward. And here, we have to make the opacity value around 100. Now we are done. Alright, our stamp creation is complete with impact animation. In the final step, I am going to add a stamp impact sound effect. Let's move over to the project panel. And then, drag and drop the sound effect in the timeline at the beginning of the stamp. Now we are done. We have successfully created a stamp with impact animation and sound effect in Premiere Pro. Let's preview. In this way, you can create a stamp in Premiere Pro. Feel free to experiment with different stamps to achieve unique results. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials.